Japan has always been an interesting place. That explains why a lot of people want to visit it. Let's say you've arrived in Japan. But where do you start? Where's the best place to eat? Where's the best place to sleep? Where do you go if you want to try a certain activity? How do you make your trip worth it? Don't worry, I got you covered. In this video, I will show you 7 places you should definitely not miss when you've arrived in Japan. Are you fascinated by the city? Or do you like bustling crowds more than silent sleepers? Do you like strolling the streets while looking at the city lights? If yes, then you'll definitely gonna like this place. Shibuya's known landmark is Shibuya Crossing. It's located just outside of Shibuya Station's Hachiko exit. What makes Shibuya Crossing so famous is it's believed to be the world's busiest crossing, where there are approximately 3,000 people scramble across it at a time. You might be wondering, what makes it so busy? Well, apart from it being near to the Shibuya Station, which is the third busiest transportation hub in Tokyo, there are also a lot of hotels, restaurants, cafe, and shopping complex located in the area. You should not miss this one-of-a-kind experience. While you're in the area, might as well check out the statue of Hachiko. If you don't know the story of Hachiko, he is a dog in the 1920s who would meet his owner at Shibuya Station every single day after his daily commute. Even after his owner died, Hachiko still waited for him every single evening in Shibuya Station. This continued for about 10 years. The dog has gone on to become a symbol of enduring loyalty nationwide, and the statue in his memory serves as a meeting point for city residents. If you're on a budget, or missed the last train home and is looking for a place to stay for the night, a capsule hotel is what you might be looking for. Capsule hotels, also known as pod hotel, is a place where you can stay at, but the catch is, it's roughly the size of your bed. It is equipped with an aircon, a mirror, a blanket, and pillows. Some capsule hotels have television in their pods. This television is connected to a headphone in order to not disturb other people. The capsules are stacked side by side, two units high, with steps or ladders providing access to the second level rooms, similar to bunk beds. You can close the pod with a curtain or door, which are not locked as per Japanese law. If you're worried about where to put your belongings, they have lockers and shoe lockers where you can store them. They also provide bathroom essentials and it has a laundry area too. It has a lounge area where you can hang out if you don't want to go to sleep yet. Also, it's not that hard to find a capsule hotel since they're all over Japan. If you're someone who loves cherry blossoms just like every other people in the world, and if you're looking for peace and tranquility, you should definitely visit Handayama Botanical Garden, located in Okayama. Handayama Botanical Garden is located along a steep hillside of Handayama. This garden is especially attractive during blooming season of cherry blossoms. There are approximately 45 varieties of cherry blossom trees that cover the mountain in pink, when the trees are in full bloom. And if you think it's gorgeous, just wait until it's night. The view gets more magical. How the lights make it seem like the cherry blossoms are glowing. You're definitely gonna wanna come. When you've arrived at Okayama Station, you can't go on with your journey without seeing Momotaro, translated as Peach Boy, because it's just literally outside Okayama Station. If you don't know who Momotaro is, 
He's the hero of a famous Japanese folktale about a boy who was born out of a giant peach and grows up to fight demons alongside his sidekicks, a dog, a monkey, and a pheasant. anime and manga, or if you're into gaming, or if you're a tech geek, you should definitely visit Akihabara, the tech capital of the world. There are a lot, believe me, a lot of things you should try in this place, and I think a day or two is not even enough to fully explore Akihabara. There are a lot of gaming centers for you to try with your friends. There are also maid cafes, Awesome vending machines. I mean, they have vending machines that sell ties. This is for if you're dressed inappropriately at a Japanese meeting or if you just forgot them because you're running late. There is also this cafe, which is a robot themed cafe. But if you're looking for a place to buy or check out anime goods, you should go to Akihabara Gamers. There are a lot of stores in there that sells anime and manga goods on the ground floor. Another store that you might want to visit is Liberty. It specializes in collectible figures and in Liberty number no. 8 has the biggest selection of gaming and anime models. <laughs> Another store that you really don't want to miss is this enormous building that pretty much have everything you're looking for. This is Mandarake. There are games, manga, CD, DVDs, and many more that you can find in every floor. Now, if you want to check out the cultural and historical part of the country, the best place to go to is Kyoto. Kyoto is famous for preserving much of the atmosphere in the past. You should consider going to King Kakuji Temple, also known as the Golden Pavilion. Originally built in the 14th century as a retirement villa for, and now a Zen Buddhist temple, the magnificent Golden Pavilion is one of Kyoto's most picturesque attractions. Taking its name from the gold leaf adorning the top two of its three floors, a design element believed to alleviate any negativity associated with death, the structure has been rebuilt in its original form a number of times, this most recent incarnation dating from the late 1950s. And if this video helped you learn a little bit more about Japan, then please do consider subscribing. Only if you want to. Thank you.